So it's important that the work area used to prepare the injection is clean before the start of the injection process. Now cleaning refers to the mechanical process of removing the dirt, debris, germs from the surface using a detergent and water. Now once the area is clean, it should be sanitized, which is a chemical process that's used to decrease the number of germs on the clean surface to safe levels. Now for cleaning and sanitizing to happen efficiently and effectively, the work area must be free of clutter so that all surfaces can be easily reached. Hand hygiene is generally used to define hand washing and other hand cleansing techniques that have been shown to reduce the spread of microorganisms. So before preparing vaccines, hands should be cleansed with an alcohol-based waterless antiseptic hand rub or wash with soap and running water if they appear visibly soiled. So although it's not required by OSHA to wear gloves while vaccinating, it is highly recommended that gloves be worn while preparing the vaccine for administration. So the next step is gonna to be to gather and inspect the supplies needed to prepare the vaccine. So once you have the items in front of you, you want to inspect them. So for the vaccine, you want to make sure that the expiration date is not expired. For the other products, you want to make sure that there is sometimes an expiration date on them, but as well as the integrity of the package has not been compromised or broken in any way. So the next step is going to be to disinfect the septum stop, and we're going to be doing that with our isopropyl alcohol prep stop. So avoid swiping in a circular or back and forth motion as this will likely not adequately remove the foreign material from the surface. So the next step is gonna to be to prepare the needle and the syringe. Now the next step is gonna to be to carefully remove the syringe from the packaging. This is done by peeling it open from the end that is specified from the manufacturer. When doing so, you wanna make sure that the tip of the syringe here, which is the critical point, is not touched to any surface. That means your fingers or the tables. This point should not be touching them. The next, you're gonna be removing the needle from its packaging in the same fashion by peeling it open from the end that's specified from the manufacturer. The hub of the needle, which is here, is a critical point that should not be touched again by fingers or by surfaces. The attachment of the needle and the syringe is going to be by a lure lock. It's gonna be twisted into each other. Now you wanna make sure that you don't over tighten it, but it should be firmly attached onto it. Now the next thing is going to be to withdraw the dose. To do that, sometimes it's preferable to pull a certain amount of air into the syringe. Now the syringe plunger has usually been in one place for a long time, so sometimes you have to push it forward or just move it slightly to get it out of that position. Then you will be pulling back the amount of air that's either equal to the volume or slightly less than the volume that you need to withdraw. So in our case, if I'm going to do 0.5 mLs, I can pull back on my syringe to the 0.5 mL mark. I can pull back to the 0.4 mL mark, the 0.3, all the way to nothing. The less air I put into the vial, the harder it's going to be to withdraw the dose. So to me to demonstrate this, I'll go to the 0.5 ml mark. So next we're gonna enter the vial. Now there is risk of coring the vial from improper entry. Coring is when a small piece of the rubber septum becomes stuck inside the needle. And this piece of rubber is then gonna be seen floating and moving around the liquid that you draw up into the syringe. And that's gonna be posing a risk to the patient for administration. So in order to minimize this, 
the steps that we will follow is first that you want to remove the sheath that's attached to the needle. You're going to be holding the vial firmly on the table with one hand. You're not gonna be having it up in the air to do this. So it's firmly on the table. With the other hand, you're going to turn the needle so that it's bevel face up. And you're gonna have it right in the center, that little center target in the septum that you see there is face up. When you're entering the needle, you're gonna apply slight downward pressure. And as you're doing that, you're going to push down and turn the needle to an upright position. So it's gonna look like this. And that goes in, and then you're gonna be rotating the vial around. After that, now we need to withdraw the vial. And so the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna withdraw the dose from the vial. Now, the hand position uh, can be in many different ways, but most people will feel most comfortable with something called the C grip. The C-grip is where you're taking your first finger and middle finger and pinching the vial this way. And then you're gonna rotate that up and your thumb and ring finger are going to grab the syringe. This allows you a few things. It allows you to move the vial up and down and it also allows you to steady the syringe when you're pulling back on the plunger. So now I have some air in here. Resist the temptation to push all the air into the vial first, especially with a glass vial that can expand out. So usually it's best to pull back on the syringe first before you do that. Now if you pull back on the syringe and you get liquid, that's good. But if you pull back on the syringe and you have no liquid, that's because the needle is usually above the line of the liquid. So in that case, you would raise the vial up so that the needle is in the liquid and then now pull back and you get your dose of liquid and exchanging the air for it. Now you'll see in my case, I wanted 0.5 mLs and I have a little bubble that's presenting itself there. The bubbles can be done by simply tapping that side and they usually will loosen up and they're gonna go straight up the top of the syringe. So don't hold the syringe sideways when you're doing that or the bubbles will not raise to the top. So once you have the bubbles to the top, you simply push up and get those bubbles out and then you pull back on the syringe and sort of exchange that so that you have all fluid inside of your syringe for the dose that you need. Once your dose is done, you can put it back onto the surface and then slowly remove the needle from the vial. So the next step is that we may need to recap the needle after the vaccine dose is withdrawn. Now there's a specific technique that is generally accepted, which is called the scoop technique. Now for this, you hold the syringe by the barrel in one hand and you place the cap flat on the table surface. Do not hold the cap. And next is the scooping technique, where you're placing the needle inside of the cap. Now you need to be careful that the needle doesn't contact the surface of the table or you don't touch the needle itself. So you wanna aim that right for the cap and then shake it back and forth until it gets firmly onto the base of that needle. Then you can push down and grab that. And if you needed to remove it, now you can remove the syringe from the needle and exchange the needle for a different one if needed. Now, if you do have a needle and a syringe that are packaged together, you would carefully remove the syringe. Notice, again, we don't touch the tip of that uh, syringe, which is the critical site, and then we would quickly attach that on to the needle by using the lure lock. And now we have the firm attachment, and then the needle sheath can come off that way for the covering. So some vaccines may require that the contents of the vial be reconstituted using a liquid prior to administration. So here's an example of a product that needs to be reconstituted. Now in lab, you may not be doing this, but we wanna demonstrate what it would be for you. So after you remove the protective covers that I have done here, you would again utilize the alcohol swab. And we're going in the same direction, preferably three times in the same direction using a different side of the alcohol swab. And I'll do the same thing for the diluent vial. That's one swipe, one side, two swipes, two sides, and then the third swipe on the third side. Now you wanna wait for that alcohol to dry. While I'm doing that, again, I'm going to be taking my syringe and needle. I'm gonna uncap the needle and I'm gonna draw back on my syringe the amount of volume that I might need in terms of air. So I'm going to, again, 
for this demonstration, do one ml. So I'm gonna be removing one ml of the diluent and I'm gonna reconstitute that. Again, I have my bevel face up. I'm going into the vial. You can do that C technique that I showed you. The concept too is not to try to touch the inside of these little uh, barrel, the spines of that barrel. You want to try to keep your fingers on the flanges, which is down here and on the base here of this of the needle or the syringe rather. So I'm going to pull back on my plunger, get those air bubbles out as much as I can. Once I have my dose, which is the one ml, I'm going to remove that from the vial. Now I'm going to be putting it into the reconstituted vial the same way. I can keep it down on the surface, but I want to raise it up so that you can see it. I'm going to be putting the diluent in that vial. If there's a large amount of volume, I might have to pull back on the syringe to equalize the pressure with the air. And then you're going to gently be swirling that around. Resist the temptation to shake excessively. Some medications are going to foam or you can actually destabilize certain proteins and peptides in there. So allow it to be gently uh, swirled. Once it is completely dissolved, now we can keep the needle and the syringe in there while that is being reconstituted. I'm going to again, pull my needle down so that it's in the vial liquid and then pull back on my dose. So in this case, I'm going to withdraw back up to my one ml mark. Remove my air bubbles from it. And then once I have my dose, again, I will turn it over, pull back, and now I have my dose drawn up and I can use the scoop technique to recap the needle for a different attachment.